Hi everyone, welcome to this new video. My name is Shinobi, I'm a virtual photographer, which means that I take photographs, but in video games. And today I'm here to explain how to learn virtual photography, how to start virtual photography by stating a lot of obvious information, especially if you're not a newcomer. But still, uh, stick around because maybe I will give you a couple of tips that uh, might be of interest. And of course, if you know already everything and more, please put the more part in the comment below, add your own tips, or add your own experience and uh, links to any resources that might help newcomers. And just keep this video in mind if anyone is reaching out to you and asking for pointers, maybe it will be helpful. So with no further ado, let's dive into this. So I received a, a DM recently from Ruben. Thank you, Ruben, for reaching out on Instagram. He said that he was starting the virtual photography journey and really didn't know how to learn or had any good pointers for a start. And I thought, well, that's not that complicated, actually. So maybe I should do a short video covering the basic grounds for people like him who just uh, f feel a bit overwhelmed by what they see and how to do it, how to reproduce it. And, you know, it's uh, it, it can be a bit daunting to just dive into it at first. So let's start by something that is very obvious and yet very needed to be reminded. When I was a kid and I wanted to know the meaning of a new word that I heard, I would ask my dad, what it means. And my dad would ask me to go grab the dictionary and bring it back to him. So I would do this and then in the dictionary look for the word, read the definition with my dad and obviously in the definition I would find some words that I don't understand so I would go back to this definitions and so on until I understood the full thing. My dad would give me some practical examples and easy understandable things and that was the way I learned new stuff. Now I have a nephew, he's 17 years old, he's really into photography and do some good stuff as well and he asks me some questions sometimes and although I understand it's very important for people to reach out to other people to know stuff and to understand and to get explanation and stuff i'm still a bit amazed and it's not just for photography or whatever but i'm still just amazed that his generation and i can notice this with my students as well in university they just don't look on internet and it's it's amazing to me because we live in an era where all the knowledge is out there it's easy to grab so you just have to go on Google and ask Google some stuff. So again, I understand it's very different to ask a friend or a relative or a peer uh, about something, but still the first step should be for you to go grab the information you can yourself, the, the basic one, you know. So for instance, in virtual photography, we will talk about this again in a moment, but start to to search for guides and stuff because there are a lot i will give you some links and interesting website to check but there are way more than this obviously so just feel free to just go outside put your fingers out of your nose and use them on your keyboard so that's that's the first thing it's a very important and useful way to learn something just like many other hobbies, and specifically artistic hobbies, I guess, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of practice, it's a lot of, you know, dive into it, mistake, uh, and stuff like this. So, your first step is to open a photo mode and just try some stuff. That's definitely the first thing you need to do, and you probably already done. One thing I, I often say to newcomers is to try to find a game that you you like uh, and you have fun with to start uh, photography so maybe you discovered virtual photography because the the new big games that you bought had a photo mode and you noticed it for the first time but maybe other games you had before or you played before have photo mode and you didn't notice them or they just added one in a later update 
and you didn't know. So first resources you might be interested in is the photo mode database that the first focus made. In this database, you're able to just look for a game by alph alphabetical order. So maybe you will find this old gem that you loved and that has a photo mode now and you, you should start with this maybe and just have fun in a game that you like. So obviously the link is in the description box below, so keep it in your bookmarks. Virtual photography can be really different depending on what you use as a platform to shoot. So if you're a console player with um, PlayStation or Xbox, for instance, you will be limited to the in-game photo mode and uh, you know official photo mode and it won't be very complicated to grab the screenshot itself because you have the share option or capture option uh, on your controller or whatever but now if you're on pc and you want or you you just started to to shoot on pc and you want to expand a bit on that there are many more uh things to know how to grab a screenshot might sound super stupid but yeah there are different ways to grab the actual screenshot uh, from the steam f12 um, capture system that is pretty bad by the way don't use this uh, compression is really not use making the the shot as good as it can but you can use reshade you can use msi afterburner and stuff like this so then again, you might have to just ask Google and find some guides, but I will provide you one. It's made by Framed Community. Framed Community has a lot of guides on different ways and technical things. How to shoot, how to screenshot, how to hot sample, and you definitely need those basics, uh, knowledge, when you start shooting on PC. So. Uh, start with the link I put down there and uh, of course to check other things on the website it, It's very useful. Also If you want to shoot a, a specific game that has specific tools because it doesn't have a, an in-game photo mode uh, There are some guides for this again on the framed uh, website, but there is also a new website made by Olivier Cesar doing a new new guides maybe updated ones or clearer ones and uh, i definitely recommend to look at it so the the link is also down below there is not a lot of games covered yet but just give it some time and again keep this in your bookmarks uh, it's really well made and very useful once you know how to shoot your game and how to you know um, grab your screenshots and you might also want to know a bit more about post-editing because post-editing is part of photography and sometimes it's a bit confusing on how to use uh, tools and what tools to use. So for this, I'm definitely not the best guy to ask. I, I use very simple things. Until recently, I was using an old version of Photoshop that I, I own. Uh, I just recently changed for different softwares, so I'm gonna cover this. But I know a lot of newcomers use some smartphone apps and I know nothing about this. So again, you will have to ask your friend Google or reach out to people who use this type of apps and they might be able to help you. But I still want to give a couple of alternatives to Photoshop or Lightroom. A lot of people use Lightroom or Photoshop, but you know, it's expensive if you don't want, uh, if you want an official version, which I recommend. It's uh, subscription based, it, you know. So I recently started to use Affinity. Affinity is a, a software that you buy once and you own it, you know, like it used to be. And you basically have all the same uh, possibilities than uh, Photoshop. It's a bit different. So there is a learning curve if you're used to Photoshop uh, to just adjust to this one. But it seems pretty easy for me for basic uh, retouch and, you know, small edits. And I also discovered Photopia. Photopia is really amazing. It's a freeware. It's basically a clone of Photoshop, but it's in your navigator, in your internet browser. So it's super easy to use. 
it's free totally and it can open a PSD or a lot of files that uh, Photoshop used or Adobe Suits use. So you can even use the, your old files uh, that you edited with Photoshop. So check it out if you don't know that and uh, maybe it will be very helpful for you. To replace Lightroom, I found another software or app that I don't know if I would really recommend it, but I'm gonna mention it anyways. It's called Luminar and it's really AI based uh, retouch. So I'm not sure it's uh, the best way to go for a start, but maybe it will be useful for you. Check it out. Links is again down below. So now that you have your basic technical issues covered, you might want to dive into how to get good at taking pictures. So again, obvious things first, uh, virtual photography is photography. So if you don't know anything about photography, you might want to start your learning by this. So again, you just go on, on Google, you type photography guides, tips, whatever. There are millions of them. Uh, you know, it's really a starting point here. You just have to, to grab the this type of website, you know, like listing five tips to composition or what's important in photography and what's not. So I'm going to put a couple down there, but really there are a million of them. So just check them in your native language if it's more comfortable. You know, it's really, really easy nowadays to just uh, find these and start with this. And again, then it's a lot of practice and your own thinking process has to, to go into this. But website guides, photography uh, guides will help you to understand better what's a good photo, what's a good uh, color theory, what's a good composition rules and things like this. You also have to understand your own creativity and unlock it. And for this, I have a video that I made before. So I encourage you to watch it. Few tips to help you. But if you want to sum it up to really the most important thing, I would say it's observation. You need to observe others work, understand why they're good, why you like it and reproduce it, not copy the shot, obviously although it could be a good training, but just don't go out there stealing shots and compositions I did to people. But still, if you, if you noticed a tilt that you feel like is really a good idea, maybe you want to try it in your own shot next time and see if it produces the same effect. Trying to understand what you like, what you dislike and things like this is a very, very important step to start being more conscious about what you do. You can also, of course, reach out to people you look up to and ask for feedback. Now, be aware that some people just don't really know how to do a feedback or are not comfortable doing a, giving advices because they don't feel legit to give some, even though you think they are amazing. So just don't get mad at people for not wanting to, to share tips or stuff. It might not be just because they are gatekeeping, but just because they just don't know how to do it. But if you if you if you want proper feedback, just do this. Don't don't wait for people on social medias to give you actual feedback because it's not how it works. We, we talked about this before on the channel, but you need to find someone with a trustful relationship, someone you look up to, someone you respect the work and you respect the opinions and just ask them. And that's the best way you, you, you will get insight on your own work without feeling attacked or undermined or anything like this. You know, you need to be able to take the critique. If you if you're not able to do this, you will never grow. So yeah, at some point you, you will have to listen to someone, I guess. I still try to do this myself after so many thousands uh, of shots so yeah inspiration analysis observation and self awareness is really key to start getting better so there you go you're set to start and to try to you know evolve and learn it's it's never ending 
you you never stop learning stuff you never stop getting better hopefully so go grab those shots share them on the internet learn from them and uh, you you will have a lot of fun so there you go go grab those shots get good have fun don't do this for the wrong reason such as being famous it won't work in this super niche hobby and go check my website if you want to see my work and services i provide for studios doing their own photo modes and i'll see you in the next video in the meantime keep snapping bye guys